Hello, my gorgeous friends on the internet. How you are doing? Okay, welcome. So today we are going to uh, be looking at how to add our very first tax code to the database. So in the previous video, we added these data using uh, the playground. Okay, so it was more like testing. It was it's, this playground is like you using Postman to test your REST API. Okay, so that was what we did in uh, our last video. So we tried to add a to do sorry to do yeah yeah we tried to add some tasks to the database and it went through so we are sure that everything works fine okay so now we are going to be doing this stuff within our code okay so already have the app running so we are going to this page so once you click on add to do it takes us to this page where we type in our task and then click on save it just shows us a response more like a snack bar that the note the tax has been added okay then once we do that we're going to fetch it and display here and then secondly lastly we're going to delete it okay so remember we added this uh this schema which is more like how we have already described the data we are going to add and the data we want to be returned okay but in this case i don't want to return the tax or the status i just have to return only the id so i'll have to remove that okay uh, you can leave the tax and the status if you want to return that but it, for my in my case now it doesn't matter so remember where we left off which was the add tax that we created initially okay so now we are going to be creating the first thing i'm going to do is to call the endpoint that we are going to use to uh, get the url and make the request to it so remember before we started this stuff we created a schema a client okay this stuff is still showing like this i think i'll just act as if i don't know okay so we're going to create this uh, endpoint class okay yeah very important we are going to create this endpoint class and then uh it will give us access to this client that we can use in our project okay to add all right so what i'll do i'll create an instance of it uh yeah an object of it client and i'll call it graphql okay i'll just call it point yeah, I think point is nice. It's actually a new, a good name. And then I can then initialize it. And point like so. Okay. So that's it. And uh, we don't need anything again. And one last thing I normally do is more like uh, calling Claire. So Claire is just like, it's going to clear. I just call it Claire. Yeah. So it just helps to clear the response and also clear the status. So it will set them to the default value. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll just, oh, uh, no, leave the status. I'll just call the response and return it to an empty string. And remember, this is a provider. So you have to call notify listener. So what this notify listener does, it notifies any widget that is currently listening to this particular provider. Okay. So this is the add add tax method okay all right so inside here that's where we are going to be doing the work yeah that are required so remember our to do is actually taking two things right i guess you know that already it's taking the task which is a string and also a status okay so we need to define that parameter here i'm going to make name this uh, name parameter so it's going to be uh, task and then secondly we have a status okay so this status is not really required because I can always pass pending to read, okay? But let's just uh, leave it, leave it that way, okay? And then uh, the second thing I'm going to do is to create, uh, yeah, this should be in a sync. So once we click on add tax, the first thing we want to do is to set this status to true to notify our uh, widget that something is happening. And then the response, I wanna say, uh, please wait, okay? So this is actually a best, a good practice. At least let the users know that know that something is actually going on. So they need to, uh, we need to change the response and the status, okay? So next thing I'm gonna do now is to call the value notifier that will give me access to another client again. Then I can initialize. Uh, this point that was created here. Okay, so it's just more like similar stuff we did here, but with a little bit of twerking. Okay, yeah, a little bit of twerking. All right, so what I'll do, we can call this stuff a final variable if you want. So what I'll do now, just create a value listener. 
value notifier with the type of GraphQL client. Then I can call this, uh, let me make it private to this particular class. I can call it client. And then what I'll do, I'll call this point, yeah? Because it's a client that we are returning. Point, then I can say get client. So if you look closely, assuming the get client actually has uh, where we can pass the token, I can actually pass the token here, okay? And then hopefully create another uh, argument here to pass the token. So whenever we retrieve the token from our widget area, we just pass it as a parameter and then it will also pass in here too. But since we don't have to pass in the token, I'll just, I'm just going to leave it that way, okay? I'm just going to leave it that way okay so now we have gotten that part that we need which is the client we have gotten the client from uh this url endpoint class okay so the next thing i'm going to do is to create a result a query result which is more like remember graph create are actually so many ways we can actually utilize it sometimes you can use the graph create the mutation widget the consumer widget the query widgets within your app but i like separating stuff the ui is not supposed to know what is happening on the back end okay so that's why i try to separate these stuff as much as i can because if i put it in the ui something breaks everything breaks but if it's here if it breaks here your ui is still going to be functional okay so just follow my method it will really help you so much okay so i'll call this one result and then we call await because this is more like a uh, network request we are trying to make here. So I will call client.value, okay? Since it's mutation we are trying to do, mutation which is to add, remember, so I'll use dot .mutate. So it takes some options that we need to put. So if you hover on it, now it takes a mutation options, okay? So I need to add our mutation options, okay? And it takes a document. Okay, I just want to collapse this. So it takes the doc document is more like uh, taking the the schema that we just created, the GraphQL schema. So what I'll do here, I just pass the GPL. Mm, is it GPL? I just hope I get this stuff. G. I think it should be GQL. Yeah, GQL. Then the document I'm going to pass is actually this. So I'll call the class first, add task schema dot add tax JSON. Okay. So we add add task schema. Uh, make sure you import it. If not, you'll be able to access uh, the, the variable inside the static variable. Okay. So every, the error is gone. And then secondly is the variables. Okay. So the variable is more like you creating an object, like you want to make a post request or a get request. You create an object that you pass inside json.decode body. You just pass it here, okay? So this is the same thing we are going to do here. The variables that this stuff needs. So if you see this stuff only need the tax and the status. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to create tax. And then the tax I'm going to pass is from here, okay? Pass it this way. And then secondly, we have the status, okay? So this stuff is still similar to what we did here from this function. We have to pass the tax, this is the query variable. And yeah, so the same thing happened here, which is the uh, mutation variable. Okay, so we just added those stuff now. And then the next thing I'm going to do is to check to confirm if the uh, request was successful. It's more like you checking if response is equal to 200, do this, okay? But in this case, we are using if result dot has exception. That means there's an error. Uh, we can just uh, print out result dot exception, okay? Like so. Else, uh, what do we do? That means there is no error. So this is where we can retrieve the data okay that are inside okay so what we can do we just because since we are not getting any data to send to the database i'm just going to set uh, the status to force okay and then send the response to something like uh tax was successfully added okay like so and then you can call notify listeners okay then if there's any error, we are going to print it out and then set status to false. Okay. And then finally, we can return the response 
uh, which is going to be i can check for if statement because sometimes the response can be a network request error or it can be anything so i'm going to check if the result dot uh, exception okay dot graphql errors uh, if it is empty that means is a network request okay that means the user don't have internet connection so we just set the response to because i've already studied uh, graphql so i know how their error returns so we don't know that internet is not found so we can return this stuff to the users to see then else uh, if it is not then we can just return the complete error that graphql uh, returned okay so we need to know the error which is coming from result dot exception dot graphql error it returns it as a list so we need to take the first index and then call message and you can call it to string yeah just convert it to string there to avoid any conflict and i think that is it and then finally we can just call notify listeners yep okay so that was it so we can print out the results to know what it is so we can just print out results the data yeah the result of data is more like it's the data that is going to return is stored inside more like this so the result of data is going to print out this data okay so i just want to be fast with this i don't know what the time is okay so it's getting longer i'm going to stop here now because we have already created this control this ad provider tax so i'm going to stop here then in the next section i'm going to show you how to add the to do that is the tax from our ui uh, which is this i'm going to show you how to add it from our ui user interface